we were told that Mercy was slapped, kicked, and there was blood all over, including the sink and the floor. And she was like she had lost it. So I tapped her on the face and I said, what is wrong? How did you come here? How are you? What is it? What is wrong with you? After almost seven years, Nairobi Principal Magistrate Peter Nduiga returned rather a shocking verdict. The judge fell short of saying the 25-year-old student was a victim of her own death. The magistrate paints a picture of an unruly young girl, one determined to disrupt an otherwise quiet evening being enjoyed by the rest of the party goers on that fateful night. The judge singles out masses having mixed dreams, going around breaking glasses to some extent, physically assaulting those who had attended the party. The magistrate says CCTV footage shows Massey flirting with six people. It is not clear why Massey was flirting with all the people, according to the principal magistrate, and yet, from the same footage, Massey was only seen leaning on one man. The magistrate also faulted Mercy for forcing herself on this man, which he says made him uncomfortable. From the look of things, it wasn't this man who was uncomfortable with Mercy's alleged advances. If the man was incensed, what reason will lead him to give in to Mercy's request of following her out of the main bar area? The judge paints a picture of an agitated group of party attendees while Mercy was evidently drunk and aggressive while the rest of the guests were friendly to her. A night guard seen trying to calm down Mercy Kane was kicked and shoved before he finally violently evicted Mercy out of the house. But the magistrate ruled that the guard led Mercy of the house in such a gentle manner despite her violent kicks on him. It was the events outside the house that have raised more questions than answers. It is not clear if Mercy now without her jacket was pushed to the ground or she fell. But she's crawling away before standing on her two feet. But notice the limp on Mercy. Mercy is also seen touching her face. Why was Mercy limping? Or was she hurt while trying to flee? From the evidences that we saw, we were told that Mercy was slapped, kicked, and there was blood all over, including the sink and the floor. And even if she had not died, there was good reasons to take somebody to court for that. The last of Mercy's outside there were senior apartments with her aunt Scholastica member. Mercy struggles to get her bag from her relative, and in the process, she hits her. We are not uh, told clearly as to how Mercy went out of that building. Things that are really that uh, there are a lot of questions that were not answered. Mercy is not seen again until her body is discovered on the highway. It is the ruling of the court during the events that unfold outside the apartment and the highway that has many asking questions and raising eyebrows. The magistrate cites the evidence of Michael Mudemba, a motorist who he says saw Mercy wave him down on the highway and nearly hit her. Moments later, returning back, now heading to town, Mercy had somehow managed to cross the road was hit by a hit and run motor vehicle, ran over several times by other motorists before a body ended up on the far end of the lane. The man says the body fitted the description of the girl who had tried to wave him down earlier when he was heading out of town. Lucina Mithayo Wanjeri told the police that at around 3 a.m., two hours before the body of Masu was discovered the police along Wayakiwe, she came across two vehicles. She slowed down and noticed an object beneath a motor vehicle that resembled a human body. 
Lucina told the police she saw two legs rolling under the motor vehicle. She drove on before leaving the scene. She noticed the motor vehicle speeding off at high speed. Suspicious, she scribbled the motor vehicle's registration on a piece of paper. But the magistrate had a different view. Evidence shows that by the time Lucina was seeing a human body on the extreme lane of Moyakiwe beneath a car, Michael Mudemba had earlier seen the same body at the same area, but not on the right inner lane where the lady had seen the body. The magistrate explains that the body had somehow moved from one point to another after being tossed around by motorists. The magistrate said there was no way Lucy could have seen a body under the green motor vehicle because it had a lower clearance. The vehicle was also analyzed and found not to have had any traces of blood. The magistrate also rubbished the evidence of the caretaker who had told the court that he had seen William Kabogo kick and trample on Masi Keino. The witness on cross-examination will not substantiate his allegations. The magistrate said the witness had not mentioned the attack in a statement he had made with the investigators when the initial investigations were being conducted. This is despite the witness appearing in court and narrating his side of events. So, Kaboko beating Masi mercilessly until even the friends started crying and and uh, begging Kapoko to, to go slow on her. I thought probably those were good information that was coming too close to nailing the person who killed Masi. But then again, we find that he's so far away. It has, it has never, it was not useful. The verdict was out. Five people adversely mentioned were cleared of any wrongdoing. The guard said to have beaten up Masi Keino or also let off the hook. In short, no one was found culpable for the death of the university student. Jackie, the woman who set up the party, was never called to court, and the court says it was unfortunate. There are a lot of things that we are not even able to get answers. Leave alone who killed her. Uh, we are not even aware as to what was the purpose of that party. In his ruling, the magistrate says it is hard to believe that these people who had been insulted, abused, and inconvenienced in Massey's unbecoming behavior will either turn around and kill Massey. The judge terminated the inquest by saying it's not clear how Massey met her death, when and by whom the fatal blow was administered. Will you want to know, kid? Yes, I really want to know. Not so that I can punish the fellow, but I just really want to know. There are certain things in life which um, uh, is best when you know, even if you do nothing about it. I would, I would really be happy to know who killed Masi. For now, the family of Masi Keno is stuck between reality and the past. Masi was a very lovely child. She loved gardening. In Wagama, we doing a bigger garden elsewhere. Um, that is a place where we could sit with her and talk and I thought that probably I should uh, make it a bit more cleaner so that uh, it reminds me that somebody somewhere uh, used to be here and uh, but she went very very unfortunately and uh, it keeps us moving on. Masi was the kind of person who who was kind. She was passionate about what she was doing. And um, she had her goals. Every time we used to talk, she used to tell me what she's planning about. And um, if I could be in trouble or something, she was, she, she was always there. Yeah, she guided me through a lot of things. From the time I was born. She's three years older than me. Yeah, so um, we grew up together. I have a younger brother, but it was mostly me and my sister. We, we were always in pairs. We, I remember there was a time we used to live in Lenana Road. Uh, uh, we used to climb 
cupboard and everything. It, it, we were tomboys, practically. <laughs> yeah, there was once she climbed on the top and told me, you know, why don't you join me? So on, in the process of joining, I slipped and fell and cracked my skull. <laughs> yeah, but it was, it was just part of the adventures we had. A past of life taken out too soon and reality that maybe they might never get to know how their daughter died. The family of Masikeino says it has never been easy. It won't be easy and it will not make sense in a very long time to come. For now, Masi's spirit is still restless. Masi's spirit is now a case closed. Denison Sarigo for Case Files.